This is a rappel ring. And ideally, you would put your rope in not only one, but two of them. And this has a bend radius similar to a carabiner and ropes like bigger bend radiuses. If it's too sharp, like a normal hanger, you would clip a carabiner to, that sharpness reduces the strength of the rope. But by how much, you ask? Chatolius has these bigger hangers that have a rounder bend radius. Bonnier, or Boner, if you're hooked on phonics, has a hanger called the Dupla, and it's bent on both sides of the wings. And so it has a nice bend radius to preserve the most strength of your rope. And in theory, you can run your rope right through these. They also make pingos that are basically half of that. And that is also supposed to be super good enough for your rope. I don't know, that's what we're gonna find out today. This is a 9.8 dynamic climbing rope, which is something you would take whippers on. And this is a 9.8 static rope, something you definitely would not wanna take whippers on. Haul a bag or rappel with this one. Now a dynamic rope being way more stretchy than this one might take the sharp bend radius more of it like a champ than this one might. But this is supposedly more durable because it's a static rope and the type of rope it is. Now, I'm not advocating that you put a rope through a hanger, but we did just put out a video that Bobby was showing how to do a trick with a Dyneema sling and then putting a rope through that in the sharp hanger. And people are like, why don't you just put that through the hanger itself? We got a bunch of comments about it. Now, these tests will tell us whether or not this is even safe to do, but even if it did work, you're pulling your rope over a sharp hanger and it's going to wear the shit out of it but honestly that's like best case scenario there's a chance that could even get stuck this figure eight is tied directly to the hanger on this dynamic rope look how much it bends that well hot dog Oh. It broke at the sharp yes. angle yes it did it actually only breaks at 14 usually in the knot we got more or less full strength out of this rope. It did not break the hanger. It broke in the knot. Yep, broke at the knot. Yeah, that's usually what I get on there. I'm surprised we got 15 last time. That's super cool. It, a knot is worse for a rope <gasps> than the sharp bend radius of a hanger. I guess that makes sense. The knot is like just that is squeezing so down on the rope. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense because it happened. Are you a YouTube engineer where you know all the answers after you see the result? Uh -huh. Yeah, it broke in this side. And... This is still intact. The rope doesn't look to be in great shape. Yeah, it seems to be flat-ish, but not completely collapsed. That is definitely going to reduce the longevity of your rope if you did do that. Now, when rope MBS, or minimum breaking strength, is measured, they'll wrap a rope around a big bend radius, something like this, right? And they'll pull, 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 and get a number, and then they'll test that three times, do a sigma three calculation to give you the minimum number it'll ever probably break at within a 99% accuracy in the best case scenario that you can never achieve because you have to tie knots in a rope to use it and knots reduce the strength of a rope up to 50 percent the knot is actually reducing it as much as tying it directly into a sharp hanger which makes sense why that would reduce the strength but maybe it's not as obvious that the knot does the same thing now if you tie a knot in a very static rope like high-tech cords like vector and dynamas you can reduce the strength 70%. And you can see that our 9.8 static rope, which is clearly abrasion resistant as it's not breaking in the hanger, is breaking lower than our dynamic rope because it's taking the bends in the knot worse than this guy. Now, what's funny is when people talk about dressing your knots. Now, I guess if you are only pulling to normal forces, it's maybe not that big of a deal, but when you pull it to destruction, it no longer looks like an eight or anything like what you tied. Now, when you're repelling, you're only putting on one or two kilonewtons. Not a big deal. Only about twice as much force as you weigh, approximately if you're like jerking your way down the rope. Now, if you're taking a fall as a leader during a climb, you are going to see anywhere between two to four kilonewtons, which is 500 to 1,000 pounds of force. And the bolt in the cam is only gonna see between four and six kilonewtons. Uh, eight if you're doing something like pretty crazy, but not usually. Oh, shit. So don't worry if this rope is breaking at 14 or 15 kilonewtons, you are super good enough. 
Now, when you put it in a U shape like this, you're actually getting loosely 200% of the strength of the rope because it is still just pinched at this one point back here, but you are pulling both strands. Now, this is when it really matters what you're wrapping it around because you can be getting in the 20 kilonewton range unless you're putting it on something sharp like this hanger, which now you have two knots against one hanger. Now, there's no reason to test this knot against the bigger bend radiuses of these other hangers. So let's just go straight to this U-shape, start with the sharpest object, and then test it with all the other items. Whoa, is that lower than when it was in the eighth? Wasn't expecting to be that low. It just tore the shit out of this. I mean, it's five times stronger than you need it to be, but... Wow, that's a crazy difference. So Brooke, right there, our two eights are just fine. We're supposed to be getting 20, by the way. Oh, wow, broke where it was touching the hanger. That held up a lot better than I thought. And at the hanger, hanger's looking a lot flatter and we got a more consistent number on that one. Dynamic rope in the dupla. This is definitely bent a bit. The rope broke where it was going around the hanger, obviously. Oh, yep. The definitely higher. 22 kilonewtons. Static rope in dupla. So the hanger is getting bent, but it's still in action. The rope broke around the hanger like it does. It's weird. It's just not a lot more with the green rope, but it was with the dynamic rope. This is like the opposite of what I was expecting. Dynamic rope in a pingo. P -I -N -G -O. Wow, I thought this was going to break the hanger or the bolt. Absolutely shocked again. As hangers do, it broke the rope. That sounded a lot louder than 22, but yeah. Oh my God, it broke at the hanger. Hanger's still in the game. Crazy that... It's not that much higher. Dynamic rope in the Metolius big hanger. Wow, it was flattening this out. Bigger hangers, and when they're thicker like this, they basically get the leverage to undo themselves. The CMI hangers were doing the same thing when we were pulling on them. <gasps> no! That's where it was on the hanger, which I'm not saying that's a good thing, right? I'm just saying, I'm just saying I've never seen this before. Whoa, we got a big number. It's nice to know that worked really well for the rope. Static rope in the Metolius hanger. Oh, wow, it broke the rope. Oh, wow, in the hanger. 25 kilonewtons. So now I put the dynamic rope around this big bend radius of the blue pin of the shackle. Let's see if we can get more strength out of this. This is 50% of the force, right? Because that's also taking half the load. But the, the part that was around the pin is also damaged. That, by the way, when you pinch a rope and it's touching, is damaged. 29 kilonewtons. That's our highest number. Static green rope around big blue pin. Nice. It broke in the knot. And I don't even see where it went around the pin. This actually held up quite well. You can see right there, it's kind of glazed, but it's like, still got life in it. Like this rope has been breaking at about 12 and a half in the knot, but we got like a lot more than double. Isn't it crazy the variables you can get with ropes? Now, if you pause the video right here, you can see the chart with all of our information. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen longer for you. But you can just find this at the blog if you ever just wanna reference this information or quickly check stuff from other content that we have. We are almost at 100 blogs on our website. We are back blogging the 400 videos that we've already published and we're trying to keep up with the ones that we are putting out now. Hopefully in a couple months, everything will be on there and you can just use the filter to find exactly what you want and have all your questions answered you've ever had about gear someday.
Now, if you don't break your rope the first time you go down putting it on a sharp hanger, you could wear it out on that exact point if it's tied directly to it and left like that for a while. You can core shot a rope by damaging the stuff inside of it. And even if this all works out for you, La Baja Climbing just sent me this Instagram post yesterday where he took a picture of somebody rappelling directly through the hangers, even though it had rings, and the party who did this couldn't really get their rope down, so he had to help them get their rope back to them. And then, to my surprise, they repeated the same process in the last two pitches, and he kindly repeated the process of retrieving the rope for them. If you love El Capitan or love Super Good Enough, we've got HowNotToSwag.com shirts for you. Now, I appreciate those who support us with one or two dollars per month. We need 1,000 patrons to be fully viable and be able to do the stuff I've got planned here on the channel. Now, Bobby and I are currently editing a video where he collected over 10 different types of old hangers that you might come across, and we broke test them all. Please subscribe because bigger channels get to do better things and that way you won't miss that one. Now if you're curious how strong rappel rings are or mussy hooks, which is the stuff you should be rappelling on, we tested those, including worn down ones, and you can go check those videos out right now.